afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. November is National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. It's a time dedicated to increasing the understanding and awareness of care at the end of life. Death and dying are often difficult subjects to talk about, so this afternoon we've asked an expert from the Visiting Nurse Association to be our guest and to discuss hospice and palliative care. Angel Means has worked for hospice for 17 years. She is the Director of End of Life Care Services for the VNA of Chittenden and Grand Isle Counties. Well, thanks so much for being with us again. Thank you for having me, Judy. Now, Angel, you must get a lot of comments about your name. <laughs> I do. <laughs> My birth name, completely ironic, mm -hmm. sometimes hard to live up to in this line of work. But. Yeah. Why is discussing hospice and palliative care particularly important for the state of Vermont? Well, the state of Vermont is the second oldest state in the nation, and um, we also have recognized that we are in the low 10% for hospice utilization. We're very much trying to understand why that is. Mm -hmm. Some of that is due to lack of awareness about hospice. And is it too maybe just the habit of people not wanting to ask for help? It could be. Well, Vermonters are known to be very stoic and um, death and dying can be a very personal experience and uh, sometimes bringing someone into that experience can be difficult. Mm -hmm. And yet there are I mean, a lot of reasons why that should be the case. Can you maybe tell me a little bit about some of the benefits of, of, of taking advantage of some of these options? and, and programs. Yes, um, I'll start with hospice. Hospice is a, um, a very comprehensive, well-coordinated program that provides skilled services for people primarily in their homes and it really takes an interdisciplinary approach to providing that care. So um, hospice is comprised of a team of experts and professionals that really address uh, the physical symptoms that may occur for someone who's dying, emotional, provides emotional support, psychosocial support, mm -hmm. as well as really addressing the economic um, challenges related to um, dying and staying at home during that process. How does the process all begin as far as, th what's the first step when, when hospice care is considered? Well, hopefully it starts with a conversation between uh, an individual and their primary physician. Mm -hmm. um, and really um, helping that, the, the physician helping that person understand that um, disease modifying therapies that they're receiving may no longer be of benefit and the burdens of that treatment may be outweighing the benefits. So really helping them start um, understanding their options at the end of life, planning for those, being proactive about um, what may lie ahead and that really is the best place um, for that conversation to start. You know, we're in such a habit of just um, going to the doctor and listening to what the doctor has to say, and it's all about cure, cure, cure. Right. But there does come a time when that changes. Absolutely, and that is the best time to start thinking about hospice. Unfortunately, we um, hear uh, people access hospice um, much later uh, than, they, than they could um, under the Medicare hospice benefit, which is the primary insurer for hospice in this country. A person can access hospice when their prognosis is close to six months mm -hmm. um, or less. And unfortunately, the average length of stay on hospice in this country is more around 70 days. And in our region, it's, it's as low as 45 days. Really? And someone could have been getting these benefits all along exactly. for all months. Exactly. Um, so what are some of the, the, the benefits to the patient of, of hospice? And what are some of the things that can happen for patients? Well, I think one of the greatest benefits is that hospice provides very individualized care. So, you know, what dying may look like for one person and family is very different than, than for another. So we really try to focus on what's unique about an individual. And we may have a family who really, or a patient who really benefits most from skilled nursing care mm -hmm. or someone to come help them bathe. Um, another family may greatly benefit from trained hospice volunteers to provide companionship and, and the care and the care plan for an individual can change over time as that person requires more care. Mm -hmm. We really try to meet a patient and family where they are in their illness and their dying process. It's interesting that you mentioned the family too because they're involved as well. Exactly. Hospice is very focused on supporting family members and providing care even after the death has occurred for those family members. And what about palliative care? What makes that different from other care? 
Palliative care really is a similar approach to hospice in that um, it's very focused on uh, relieving whatever is suffering for that patient, really helping to manage pain and symptoms. Palliative means to palliate, to alleviate suffering, or to eliminate, su relieve suffering. And um, the difference between palliative care and hospice is that palliative care really should um, focus at the time of diagnosis of a life-threatening illness on through while someone is seeking disease-modifying therapies. And they would transition to hospice more when those therapies are no longer working. And what's the VNA's role? Well, the VNA um, and the VNAs across Vermont all have a hospice program that services every region in the state. So um, we provide palliative care home-based services and also hospice home-based services. And not only in individual homes, we extend hospice into nursing homes, community care homes, the hospital, anywhere a person resides, they can access hospice support. Do you find that uh, mostly people do want to be home? Most people, if given the right amount of support, would prefer to die at home. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, is that, is that support really out there for people? Do people realize that support is out there? I, I, I think there are a lot of uh, misunderstandings or, or misconceptions about what hospice can and can't do. I think some people feel like if you enroll in hospice that you have to go to a place to die, that hospice means a home. Mm -hmm. And so there's concern that they may have to leave their, their home. Um, I think that um, there are just a number of barriers to uh, people accessing hospice, uh, but we can provide um, and coordinate with other organizations to really maximize support for someone to stay in their home. It's become a little harder with our aging population because a lot of people don't have family support in the home setting, right. so we may need to bring in other resources to help them remain there. And if they can't, we're very fortunate in our community to have the Vermont Respite House in Williston, mm -hmm. which is the only hospice home in the state of Vermont. When is it time for a, f a family to maybe step in and say, palliative care and hospice care at home is great, but I think it's really time to take it to the next level. Maybe you do need you know, a, a place to go. It really depends on um, you know, what that person's dying process is like. And sometimes um, if, if um, a person is having some uncontrolled symptoms or some emotional uh, challenges with dying uh, that's keeping them awake at night or, you know, the family may become quite fatigued in, in providing that care. Hospice provides intermittent services and we really work with the family educating them and supporting them to be a part of that, that care. But if a family becomes, you know, quite fatigued with that process, um, or there's breakdown in the family system in some way, maybe a frail um, family member trying to care for their spouse right. becomes ill themselves, then we may have to help them look at other resources and other options. Why is it so hard for people to talk about this, do you think? I mean, well, we I plan for almost everything in our lives. Exactly. It it's, uh, has a lot to do with our culture of death and dying. Um, it's, it's not seen by some as a very natural part of life. It's, it's not a comfortable topic. We haven't been so good at addressing it in our healthcare system. We focused more on treatment and very aggressive therapies. Um, I think the way that a person approaches um, death and dying really has a lot to do with their personal experiences. If you haven't been a part of a good death or a good dying process, uh, there's a lot of fear involved, a lot of unknown. Mm -hmm. And so how can individual Vermonters access hospice or palliative care? Well, like I said earlier, there is a VNA program that services every region of the state, and so contacting your local visiting nurse association, talking to your primary care physician. Mm -hmm. I know we're seeing some pictures here, and um, maybe you could talk a little bit about um, where hospice care is provided. I know we talked about lots of people do want to stay home. They do, and a lot of people don't realize that um, if they, for some reason, can't receive hospice care at home, if they reside in a nursing home, we can bring hospice into the nursing home under most circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, that they can still access their Medicare or Medicaid hospice benefit in that setting. 
once again, one of the things that you should be considering and thinking about too, as as um, as you get older, consider you know maybe what you do want for plans for end of life care. Exactly. Um, we have a fabulous resource in this state called the Vermont Ethics Network, and they have a wonderful website. And they're very involved in creating tools that will help people write down their options, their choices, what they would like to see happen for them at the end of life under certain circumstances. Those are um, advanced care directives or advanced care plans. Mm -hmm. And important to share that too with your family. Absolutely. Now at the beginning of the program you mentioned that Vermont has a low utilization of hospice care. Why is that the case? Well, in the 17 years I've been involved in hospice, um, there's, there's always been a need to educate consumers about the hospice benefit, to try to um, uh, eliminate some of the misconceptions about hospice. Uh, the Medicare benefit was designed in the late 1970s, and not a lot has changed about that benefit over time, but the demographics have changed and so the needs are different. Um, that six month prognosis that's part of the Medicare criteria is, is very challenging. Um, sometimes it's very difficult depending on the diagnosis to really predict that kind of time frame right. for someone. It's also very scary for someone to hear, you know, they have a prognosis of six months or less. I think um, some people equate hospice to maybe meaning there's no more hope. You know, my primary care physician is going to abandon me if I enroll in hospice. I'm not going to have the kind of options that I may want at the end of life. And, and so we are you know, always involved in educating consumers about. And what's Vermont doing to address the low use? What are some of the ways that uh, we're educating? I know there's an important memorial service that's coming up. Um, we have a hospice annual memorial service in this community on uh, November 6th at the Unitarian Church at 3 o'clock. And most hospices provide an annual memorial service, and that's for the bereaved uh, survivors of our hospice patients, and really for anyone in the community who's experienced a death, and that is supporting the grief process. We have an incredibly active um, and engaged um, Vermont State Legislature. Last year, they were very active in passing Act 60, H201. It was a bill related to hospice and palliative care, really trying to understand some of the barriers in this state. There, there, were pro there are programs that we couldn't access simultaneously with hospice, and they've eliminated that barrier for a Medicaid waiver program. Um, encouraging third-party insurers to really look at their hospice policies, possibly broaden them out beyond the six-month prognosis mm -hmm. so that there's not that barrier. Uh, working with Vermont Ethics Network to help educate consumers about the importance of advanced care planning. Um, we have at the VNA a fabulous program called the Madison Dean Initiative, mm -hmm. which is a volunteer program um, that really um, provides a lot of time educating consumers, um, professionals about end of life care, creating educational tools. Um, and so where can viewers get more information? Um, there, there is a, a, a statewide end of life care website um, that is uh, vtpcrc.org, the Vermont um, Palliative Care and End of Life Resource Connections. Mm -hmm. Again, I mentioned the Vermont Ethics Network website. And then we have our own VNA website, which really describes um, all of the comprehensive end of life care services that we provide, vnacares.org. Mm -hmm. So people should probably think about rather than hospice being something for the end of life, think about it as maybe a way to help out your loved ones who are going to be going through a very difficult situation um, as well as yourself. Absolutely, yes. And um, maybe you can tell me a little bit too about the importance of grief and bereavement support during this time. Well, grief doesn't just happen after the death occurs. Um, there's grieving all along the way. So hospice really focuses on um, anticipating what that grief might be like for a family after the death, but also preparing for the death, preparing families and individuals who are dying for that, that um, death. And um, because um, hospice does involve the entire family, we really focus on the children's experience with that dying process. And 
we have a pretty extensive bereavement program um, in this region in that we offer a children and family bereavement camp each year. We mentioned our annual memorial service. Mm -hmm. And again, we individualize that support depending on uh, the impact of that, that death for that family. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking about all this. It's a very important topic. Thank you, Judy. Thanks, Angel. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.